Evolution is a fact, not a theory. And there was no such thing as a first person. To put it simply, evolution just refers to genetic changes over time. And this is something we observe in our DNA, in the fossil record, and lab experiments. We can observe genetic mutations in our DNA. When we sequence it, we can take a look at exactly where chromosomes have fused together. Our DNA leaves a nice record of how we evolved in the past. We also have thousands of examples of transitional fossils in the geological strata. We can date these fossils and observe their homologous and analogous structural changes over time. Here's a prime example of various structures that point to common descent in species. And we can observe speciation in real time in a lab setting. For example, Richard Lenski's experiment in the 1990s, where he took a species of bacteria, he split their population and observed their speciation over thousands of generations. And these are just the surface level evidences for evolution. There's so much more out there. Now you're probably asking, well, I thought it was called the theory of evolution. Well, it's not. That's an abbreviation for the theory of evolution via natural selection. You see, natural selection is the mechanism of evolution. It's the theory that explains the fact of evolution. In science, a theory isn't just some random idea. A theory is backed by tons of evidence and data, but it shows you how something happens. It's the how, it's the mechanism. So when people say the theory of evolution, they really mean the theory of natural selection, which is the mechanism for evolution. It's called the survival of the fittest. The fittest ones in their environments survive, they pass down their genes, and the ones who die, unfortunately, don't get to pass on their genes and their lineage goes extinct. So it's very important to recognize a difference. Evolution itself is a fact that we observe. It's genetic changes over time. And the theory of evolution via natural selection refers to the survival of the fittest, the explanation for the fact of evolution. Much like Einstein's relativity is a theory of gravity, even though gravity is a fact, gravity itself is a fact. Einstein's relativity is the mechanism that allows us to explain how gravity works. So now that all that's out of the way, we can focus back onto evolution. And fundamentally speaking, evolution is a biochemical process. DNA is just a long stringy molecule that has certain genes in it. And these genes are what drives the production of your cells and what types of cells are produced. The biological makeup of your DNA, right, the structure of your DNA, is what makes you, you. And your body is full of trillions of cells, always being produced. And your DNA, which replicates, drives this production of cell growth. Think of DNA like a zipper. It can unzip and then zip back up again. But during the replication process, mistakes can occur. Genes can be misplaced, mismatched, inserted where they don't belong, or even deleted entirely. So new cells can inherit this slightly different DNA as it rezips back up again. And this process happens trillions of times in our bodies. And these mutations accumulate over time. So when you're ready to have offspring, if one of your sperm, if you're a male, or egg cells, if you're a female, contains this mutated part of your DNA, well, when they fuse together with your partner's sperm or egg cell, the offspring will inherit this slightly different DNA from the parents. So we end up with children who are just ever so slightly different from us. Great, are you with us so far? Okay, feel free to scroll back and rewind it if you need to. Okay, now imagine this process happening over a thousand years. That's about 50 generations of accumulated changes in our DNA. My great, great, great grandparents a thousand years ago had kids that were slightly different from them. And their kids had kids that were slightly different from them. And their kids had slightly different DNA from them. And it goes on and on and on until today where my DNA is now very different from my ancestors a thousand years ago. 
and even more so, a million years ago, let alone 10 million years ago. Think of all the people in this time that inherited these mutations. If you have enough people in a population inherit these mutations, the genes sufficiently spread around enough to yield a new species. So for example, if you take an original population of people within the same species, aka their DNA is close enough to reproduce with each other, and you split up this population of people in two such that they each go their own different ways, well, one population of people will inherit certain changes as they evolve, and another population inherits certain changes as they evolve. And over enough time, the two populations' DNA will be different enough such that they can't produce with each other anymore. That's Speciation 101. There you go. That's the basics of evolution. Congratulations, you finally understand the basics. Now, why isn't there a first person? It seems intuitive that there has to be somebody first. Well, here's a simple analogy. I was a baby at one time. Then I became a child. Then a teenager. Now I'm an adult. And eventually, I will become an old guy. It's simple enough, right? Now, there was no one day that I morphed from a baby into a child. In other words, if you go back in time to a specific day when I was a baby, the day before that, I was still a baby. And the day after that, I was still a baby. Because obviously, aging is a slow and gradual process. Now imagine if I took a picture of myself every single day throughout my entire life from a baby to an old man. Now you take all these pictures, you put them in order of age, you have a long stack of thousands of pictures showing me gradually changing from a baby to an adult. If I take one photo near the top of the stack, you'll see I'm an adult male. If I take a picture from the day before, it's still an adult male. You'll never be able to find a photo of the first day that I became an adult male because I age gradually on a day-to-day -day basis. You change ever so slightly, it's hard to see the difference on a day-to-day -day basis. The same applies to evolution in the human species. If I took a photo of a person, a homo sapien from today, and every human that preceded it for six million years into the past, you will never be able to find the first photo of the first human. Because before every human was another human. There was no first person because evolution happens on a very gradual basis and collectively on a generational basis. If we pluck a photo from the stack a thousand years ago, we find a homo sapien still, but they were slightly different from us today. You have to pluck a photo from way further back to see larger differences. A million years ago, you'll find a homo erectus. Now, if we go all the way back to 6 million years ago, you'll find a Salanthropus chadensis. It wasn't a human. 4 million years ago, we have Australopithecus afarensis, who was a human. But remember, it wasn't that they suddenly went from non-human apes to human apes. It was a gradual process in between, in which small changes over those 2 million years yielded enough genetic change to produce a species different enough that we see them as a human and not a chimp ancestor. If you go far back enough, you'll see that we actually share ancestry with chimpanzees. And since our chimp divergence, several human species have branched out with all of them going extinct except for us. And evolution is always happening just like we're always aging. It's just a gradual process, just like we're aging gradually. And every time we dig up fossils, we're looking at snapshots of specific species in our past. Think of evolution like a tree of life. And this tree is constantly branching out and every branch resembles a new species. This tree is ever growing. It never stops growing as long as it's living, just like life. Life will always continue evolving as long as we're alive. 
So there can't be a first human, because evolution is always happening, constantly, and there's never one moment that we can look back at and say that this was where the first person happened. It doesn't exist. All right, guys, that's the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, comment, like to help the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.